From the murky waters of the sportsman's paradise, stories emerge. Stories of the generations of people who have shared in the bounties of the land. Stories of communities that have persevered through natural disasters. Stories of the abundance of fish, wildlife, and adventures that create an ecosystem rich in diversity. And from the silted banks of the mighty Mississippi to the soggy marsh bottoms, from the tops of towering pine forests to the depths of the salty gulf, human and animal have shared this fortune for centuries. Enjoy these stories as told by outdoor journalists who travel across our state documenting the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. Welcome to another edition of Bayou Wild TV. I'm Don Dubuque along with Captain Martha Spencer. This week we revisit the biggest saltwater fishing rodeo in Louisiana history. It's the longest, the richest, offers the most prizes. We're talking about the CCA star at their awards banquet. Some yeah. pretty interesting stories. Too. Really interesting stories and also really large fish. The offshore division had one of the most competitive ones they've seen with the red snapper and the cobia. We'll discuss that and introduce you to all the winners. It was actually a trip with my with my boss. Uh, we fished with a group of customers, and uh, we fished mangroves and lemon fish, and we had two lemon fish that day. We knew it was a big fish, and when we got back to the dock, I went and waded in, and it was you know, 56.7. So I was I was pumped up because I knew it was the first place, and but it was the second week of June, so the, the tournament had only been going on for two weeks. So I said, no way it's gonna hold, and and doubt it did. <laughs> Speaking of cobia, this is the time of year they usually migrate through the northern gulf. It's a great time of year to get out and catch them, whether it's behind a shrimp boat, a drill ship, or an oil rig. Now is the time. We'll take you out, and we're going to go do some cobia fishing. Come on, baby. Oh, got him. Holy moose cobia. Who wants him? I do. <laughs> a lot of times you can pitch a bait straight to a cobia, and when they come up, a lot of times there'll be more than one. So it's pretty exciting when they do come up. They're extremely hard fish to gap, and they're always trying to shake the hook. So it can turn into pure excitement and pure chaos very quickly, especially when there's more than one cobia on the line. Here we go. Talking about perfect timing, we've got Chef John Foltz coming up with his lemon fish and tomatillo salsa dish coming up later on. So we'll tell you how to not only catch cobia, but also how to cook them. And a little bit just white wine. And of course, you see what's happening here. You have that nice sizzle. So we've created a steamer more than anything else, right? right? So we can take some of that nice uh, flavoring right there. Bring, bring your fish over here. Coming up, it's got many names. Lemon fish, cobia, we call it delicious. A tomato, tomatillo rotel salsa. That's recipe for it too. Very good. Closed captioning made possible by CETO.com. Become a member. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection. And rich with tradition. A taste that's savory. Crispy. And a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. If you're lucky enough to bag a deer or a hog this season, bring it here to Double D. Double D processes hogs and exotic game and guarantees your product is always the meat you brought to Double D. Double D Meats in Bogalusa, home of country smoked, spicy jalapeno cheddar, and other customized flavors. Bring your deer or your hog here to Double D, where you always get your meat back in return. It's worth a drive to Bogalusa from anywhere. Double D. Well, the CCA Star Rodeo this year was a big success. A lot of new boats and a truck going out. Also, they have a kayak division now where they gave out Hobie kayaks trucks, boats, all kinds of prizes, money prizes. It was a very competitive year. 
almost as much fun as fishing in the Star Rodeo is going to that great awards banquet. Every year it's held at the same place at Live Oak Arabians in Baton Rouge and we take you there now for the Star CCA Awards Banquet. 2018 Star Tournament is in the books. Uh, it was an interesting summer. You know, a lot of the fish that ended up winning the tournament actually were caught in the first couple weeks, which is sometimes common and sometimes very rare. A lot of guys had to hold on for, for 100 days worth of, of a tournament, so it always pays to be in if you're fishing during the summer and you never know when you're just gonna get lucky and it just takes one catch. Oh, I've been fishing this uh, TCA tournament for years, but never really knew what we would win. I never paid that much attention to it. The first two fish caught in the boat was a uh, nice sized fish. And the third one that I, we caught in the boat was a, the tag fish. Then I didn't know what to do next. We had to get on the phone and start Googling and trying to see where we went from there. And uh, that's when we found out we wanted a truck and we had to go register our fish. It was actually a trip with my, with my boss. Uh, we fished with a group of customers and uh, we fished mangroves and lemon fish and we had two lemon fish that day. And it, uh, it, we knew it was a big fish and when we got back to the dock, I went and waded in and it was 56.7, you know, so I was, I was pumped up because I knew it was the first place, and, but it was the second week of June, so the, the tournament had only been going on for two weeks. So I said, no way it's gonna hold and, and doubt it did. This year was a story of redemptions and good stories. You never know what's gonna happen in the Tag Redfish Division. Thankfully, speckled trout weren't biting very well, so we decided to go and see if we can catch a few redfish. The real punch to this story is, my wife caught one four years earlier, and we weren't registered. So this was uh, not supposed to happen again. Everybody told me, don't ever register, you'll never do it again. But I did, and here we are. Nice, fine boat. I love it. Um, I caught a redfish last year, and I was entering. My dad was gonna enter me in it the night before, but he forgot to. And I caught one that day. I went up to the house, and I was like, Dad, I got one, and he started freaking out. Well, this year, I was catching, like, a lot of redfish. And I cast him whenever he got out of the truck, and I caught the tag redfish. You know, also on the leaderboard and some of the winners uh, were some usual suspects. We had people like Dave Broussard, who's won before, Ed Sexton, who's won before. There were also some people that nobody had ever heard of. Uh, that put a fish on the board. In fact, one of the youth winners, the day before the tournament started, caught a six pound fish as a six year old. Uh, and truly, he would have won an 18 foot Nautic Star if he had caught it 24 hours later. I mean, I fish in an area down river to where there are usually good trout caught. And I mean, we, we try to target, trying to catch them. Uh, we're not trying to catch numbers. And the, the, uh, the funny thing is, the area that we normally fish, we fished on Friday of the tournament. We didn't catch a trout. And so we regrouped, went out of Baptiste Colette, which I never fished on Saturday. And we ended up, um, we ended up catching 43 trout that Saturday morning. And we had five that went 28 pounds. It was like, it was the best day of the summer. And we didn't even come close to the rest of the summer. My name is Cyrus Sloan Jr. and I just won this boat. My name is Merrifield and I won this boat in the CCA Star Tournament. My name is Ethan and I won this boat while fishing the CCA Star Tournament. Well, the, the best part of, of what I do is, is dealing with the youth division. It's easy and we make a lot of kids days and a lot of parents days uh, when we start making those fun calls. That was probably like what your sixth, seventh, eighth trout maybe? Eighth trout in his life. And he won a boat on his eighth trout in his life. That's pretty good. Well, you know, now that 2018 is in the books, we're starting to work on 2019. 2019 will be our 25th anniversary. So expect a lot of twists and turns, some very interesting new early bird drawings. We'll probably be adding some divisions. So stay tuned, check out our Facebook page and the Star uh, Instagram page as well. And uh, we'll be making some announcements here in the next few months, but stay tuned. It is going to be a heck of a year. 
Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. It gets even more chaotic when you have more than one and you're trying to get them in the boat because they're a lot like mahi-mahi and then they flip around. They're extremely hard fish to gaff and they're always trying to shake the hook. So it can turn into pure excitement and pure chaos very quickly, especially when there's more than one cobia on the line. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use what the pros use. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because, guys, it has more herbs and spices. It has a much better flavor. It's easy, just pour and boil. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag, pour and boil for great crawfish every time. Typically in the fall, when the shrimp boats move in close, they're pushing off bycatch off the boat. So they're sorting their shrimp and everything that's not shrimp, they tend to push off the sides of the boat. Lots of fish figure this out and they basically see it as a free meal. So they tend to follow the shrimp boats and get the bycatch from the boats. Typically in mid to late fall, the cobia move up from Florida and move across the Gulf. It's a great time of year to catch them on rod and reel. And also spearfishers like to go out because the water is still warm, but the fish come in a little more shallow on the oil rigs. They're not the smartest fish and oftentimes they come in packs. So if you catch one, a lot of times another one will swim up with it and you can often land that one too. A lot of times you can pitch a bait straight to a cobia and when they come up, a lot of times there'll be more than one. So it's pretty exciting when they do come up. That one right there, Adam, that's good. It gets even more chaotic when you have more than one and you're trying to get them in the boat because they're a lot like mahi-mahi and then they flip around. They're extremely hard fish to gap and they're always trying to shake the hook. So it can turn into pure excitement and pure chaos very quickly, especially when there's more than one cobia on the line. Come on. That's it. Give me the boat. All right. Is that the shock that came up? I don't uh, think it was. Like, uh, I think it was back in Cobia sometimes can be found behind shrimp boats, but typically people are tuna fishing. A lot of times they can be mistaken for sharks because they look so similar to them. So a lot of times you might see a cobia and not even realize it. They can get up to 80, 90 pounds, which is pretty rare, but a good cobia is anything over 30 pounds. There you go. There you go. Oh, there you go. I see him. Look, 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 he's coming. He's coming. Oh, look at the size of that lemon thing. Right here, let him fly. No, watch out, watch out. Oh, 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 oh. Come back, come back. Chris, 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 Chris. Oh! Got him! Got him! Oh, shit. Got him. I'll wipe the bag, I'll let him run. Holy moose, Kobia! There we go. Who wants it? I did. <laughs> <laughs> I lost him.
Coming up next, we take that lemon fish from the Gulf of Mexico to White Oak Plantation in Baton Rouge. We're gonna cook up some delicious tomatillo cobia coming up. So now we're gonna mix that around nicely. And uh, then once that's all coming together, you wanna kind of soften these vegetables, but you can see what's happening. We, we're creating a bed. And it's the, getting moist. Uh, yes, yeah, getting a bed for the fish to, to kind of lay on. Now let's go with some of our herbs. And again, we have a, a, just a multitude of herbs here fresh. In 1967, Dutch Stogner realized his dream to run his own meat market. 50 years and three generations later, Double D and the Stogner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection. And rich with tradition. A taste that's savory, crispy, and a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. Again, season both sides of the fish too. And now I'm going to put the fish down with that. You see how you have the skin side up right now? Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to hold everything together. Now I'm going to take this cover it a little bit like that with the sauce. Bury it a little bit. Yeah, bury it a little bit because I want to maintain that moisture. I would time it right now for that uh, perfect time, like I say, eight to 10 minutes at the most, depending on the thickness of the fish. I'm gonna cover it up like that. Find out if alternative treatment is the answer to your pet's health issues. Contact Dr. G at VetNaturally.com. We're here at White Oak Plantation. We're cooking a fish today that I kind of have a little bit of a, I don't know, an interesting relationship with. <laughs> it, I, I love to catch them. I love to spear uh, them, but I'm not crazy about eating them. Change my mind today. What are we making? <laughs> well, we're making what most people would re refer to as lemon fish, uh, a cobia, which is, I think, a great fish. I love a, another name for it. They call it the prodigal son because you know that fish is touring the whole Gulf all the way to Mexico. They and now, migrate. Now they're coming back to Louisiana right Absolutely. now. So at this time of year, uh, it starts to show up on a lot of restaurant menus as well as, of course, uh, 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 fishermen's menus. The reason you probably don't like it is the texture, right? right? So if we take a look at it right here, here's a great example. It's very it was, thick. Yeah, it's very thick, and of course it's kind of got that opaque look to it, and it's not like a, a red red fish or, or a red it's not snapper. A flaky it's not, fish. Yeah, it's yeah. not a flaky fish at all. So you have to cook it as you would a piece of meat. Okay. But at the same time, once it's done, uh, it, it's uh, uh, if you don't overcook it, this is a fish that'll really give you trouble if you get over that eight to eight to ten minutes or so in the pan. So I'm gonna, uh, I've come up with an idea here that really creates moisture for the fish, okay. which is what's important. So we're gonna begin with just a little bit oil, and you can kind of, we're doing a salsa here, so we're gonna call, uh, we call this a tomatilla. Yeah, this salsa. is not celery, these are those, and <laughs> so, it's not a green tomato either. No, it's right there. It's you a tomatilla. Right the tomatilla is the Mexican, the Mexican, uh, what they would call a Mexican tomato, which is not, but I'm gonna saute this in a little oil. You see they have how a husk. Has a little husk on it, and you peel, peel the off. husk, and the little green, what the people would say green tomato, is on the inside. It's just another nice uh, fruit. Now let's go with our spicy. We're gonna put uh, some flavor in here with a little uh, spicy uh, jalapeno. This is just a rotel, right? So we want some pepper in that because it is a salsa. And uh, immediately you see that's some pretty, pretty in the pot, Very right? Pretty. Now let's put a little bit more spice. You have some red pepper flakes there. I would use, uh, I would use any of your garden peppers. We have cayennes out here. We have. You want all, all of this? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. You got to put some. There you I'm go. trying to get this put fish ready for you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> now we're gonna go ahead and saute that around nicely. Now let's put our herbs and spices. I mean our uh, other uh, vegetables before the herbs. We have uh, uh, yellow bell pepper, green bell pepper. Look at the amount of garlic I'm gonna put. Lots of garlic. See that? You want to put a lot of garlic. <laughs> 
Because for people who don't like the fish, they're gonna love the sauce. Right. <laughs> all right. So now we're gonna mix that around nicely. And uh, then once that's all coming together, you wanna kind of soften these vegetables, but you can see what's happening. We, we're creating a bed. And it's the, getting moist. For, yeah, it's getting a bed for the fish to, to kind of lay on. Now let's go with some of our herbs. And again, we have a, a, just a multitude of herbs here, fresh parsley, tarragon, green onion. Uh, basil, a little green onions in there. You can use oregano if you want to. You can use, uh, yes, you, you know, the thing about herbs and spice, that's all it's about whatever it. you want. It's, it's whatever you want, whatever's coming out of the garden. Now, once this is all in, what we want to do is to take our fish. You see, I have that nice little uh, section right there. We want to season that on each okay. side. You have a little salt, pepper, uh, garlic, uh, and you want to just kind of season it nicely. That's another thing about this fish. You want to bite into it and taste flavor first. You don't want to kind of look for that flavor right. once you get it. So a little uh, a salt, pepper, and kind of rub it in mm -hmm. there with your hand a little bit, and then flip it over and do the same thing. I also recommend putting a little paprika, a little spicy paprika on it. It's going to be really nice. So put that in like that. Yeah, rub it again. Season both sides of the fish, too. And now I'm going to put the fish down with that. You see how you have the skin side up right now? Mm -hmm. uh, that's going to hold everything together. And I'm going to take this, cover it a little bit like that with the sauce. Bury it a little bit. Yeah, bury it a little bit because I want to maintain that moisture. I would time it right now for that uh, perfect time, like I say, 8 to 10 minutes at the most. Depending on the thickness of the fish, I'm going to cover it up like that. So that's where we're at right now. Then okay. we'll come back and season a little bit in a minute. Sounds great. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because the flavor is so good. It has more garlic, onion, paprika, lemon, and not too much salt. It has much better flavor. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag, and pour and boil for great crawfish every time. In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Well, our cobia, a.k.a. lemonfish, has been marinating pretty much in our tomatillo salsa, and it smells really good. And a little bit just white wine, and of course, you see what's happening here. You have that nice sizzle, so we've created a steamer more than anything else, right? right? So we can take some of that nice uh, flavoring right there. Bring, bring your fish over here, uh, I'll, and that's what we're doing. We're decorating it with just some, some of that nice uh, flavor. And then go ahead. I have a fork there for you. Uh, the, the biggest problem is, as I say, overcooking. So you see how that's breaking apart real mm -hmm. nice? Huh? It seems like this is a perfect recipe for it because it's a fish that needs to stay moist. That's exactly right. And then when you, when you put your, your, your fork in it and you can break it like that, uh, then you know you have some pretty good uh, fish, right? How does that taste? Huh? It tastes very good. The thing with cobia, if you gave this to somebody and didn't tell them what it was, they may not even think it's fish. Well, It almost has like a meat texture to it. It does, and people look for different fish for different reasons, like salmon or, mm -hmm. or any of our fish. This is an example of the other side right. of the spectrum right. on, on texture. So really nice fish, but it's a uh, sauce flavor really yeah. nice. I'd eat that. I like I'd it. Eat that. So what do we call this recipe? The tomatillo that's rotel. Salsa. Uh, cobia. Uh, cobia, that's it. Mm -hmm. Say that again. Mm -hmm. Tomatillo rotel salsa cobia. <laughs> I call it doggone good. It is huh? good. <laughs> In 1967, Dutch Stagner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stagner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. 
we also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. Hey y'all, it's Sam Barbera. I'm with the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Foundation. The foundation is a nonprofit that raises funds and provides support for the Louisiana Wildlife and Fisheries Department. We assist with numerous projects like black bear, whooping crane, bald eagle, as well as family, youth, and women's workshops. For all of the information on the foundation, visit LAWFF.org. We need your support to help our wildlife and fisheries. Visit LAWFF.org. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection and rich with tradition. A taste that's savory, crispy, and a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. Coming up next week, we go after silver carp, also known as silver fin. Not only are we going to tell you about the history of this invasive species, but how to catch them and then how to cook them. If you look at the scenario last past probably 20 years, the government went on and, and spent hundreds of millions in science research, tried to eradicate. Most fish are from Canada all the way down to our bayou, the back wood of our back wood. You can eradicate those fish. So the transparent thing to do and the most common sense to everyone is you put a value on these fish and I guarantee you that the the kunas from down the south and the redneck all the way up there to the Canadian border, they're going to go after it. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and catch the Outdoors with Don Dubuque radio network program every Saturday morning from 5 to 7 a.m. And if you like the shirt I'm wearing here, you can pick one up at BayouWildTV.com. Get them for Christmas or the short sleeve Henley t-shirt as well. We'll leave you today with some beautiful footage of the white pelicans at LSU Lakes. They're migrating through and you can catch them for about a few more weeks.